Hi there, everyone. Our next speaker, Sue Dean, is a board certified advanced holistic health nurse who is best known as the founder and CEO of The Nature Nurse. Sue will be speaking to us about simple ways that nurses can tap into nature for restoration. Thank you so much for joining us, Sue. Thanks, Amy. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you to the folks at Nursing Now. This is such a great opportunity. And especially as a holistic nurse, I just want to say that I hope that this will expand to really start to pull together best practices that around the world, and especially in um, health prevention, because I think that's such an underutilized space, which, and this is such a person, per it worked out perfectly that um, Dr. Fisher's previous session really lends itself right into what I'm going to talk to everyone today. So um, I could talk to you for hours basically about nature and health, but the purpose of this event, I have prepared a few evidence-based uh, key points, knowing that nurses are busy people working in extremely intense environments right now, and we need simple, accessible strategies in our restoration toolbox. So. Um, I have a booth in this space somewhere. Um, this is, I'm new to this platform, but I've put all of my, a lot of links in there to a lot of what I'm talking about today. So hopefully people can just sit back and relax and feel free to chat in the chat box because I think that makes the engagement better for everybody. Um, so first I wanna say that I will be using the term nature, but what I really mean is natural environment which I include as everything outdoors and all the beings outdoors. And some of these beings, including like plants and stones, occasionally wildlife, we may actually bring indoors to experience um, life that way as well. And we are actually part of nature as a whole with a symbiotic reciprocal relationship with our plants ecosystems, which really was stressed as well with Dr. Fisher's presentation. Um, we're not just an isolated being here. We are all intertwined and our health and well-being is very much determined with that link with our environment out, outside. Um, over, pa over the past several decades, our relationship with our natural environments has eroded for a number of reasons. And this disconnection has sci been scientifically shown to not only negatively impact our planet, but our own health and well-being. I know here in the, in the US, for example, um, the average American is spending 90% of their time indoors, which to me as a nature lover is, I can't even imagine that would be torture, but um, that's what's happening. And we are definitely seeing the impacts of that. And it would be really interesting to learn more about globally what people are in terms of how much time they're spending in nature. Um, so it's vital that we consciously plan time to spend in and with nature. The nature-based practices that I'm going to share with you today assume that you uh, have access to a healthy environment. So um, one of the things that the nature nurse is our a key mantra is know your nature. And that means before you go and experience the natural world around us, especially if it's new to you, is that you really want to take some time to check into things about safety and climate extremes and insects and animals. So we don't want you just going randomly out there. For example, um, when I came to move part time down here to North Carolina, um, they have a lot of snakes and most of them are not venomous or a problem, but there are some that are, and they're very prevalent at certain times of the year. And I would have absentmindedly just go hiking and do things like that and not com completely been unaware had the local parks not had a lot of information to share to um, alert us to that. Um, so definitely know your nature and including, you know, as the environment gets more challenging, whether there's air pollution warnings or heat extremes or fire and things like that. Um, first, what I wanted to do is um, we're going to do a couple of questionnaires here today. One is a poll or um, one question, which goes back and ties in with what Dr. Fisher talked about earlier, is to ask yourselves whether you're here or watching this later, is how many, if you sit down and think on average, how many minutes a week do you feel like you spend outdoors in nature? 
And if you want to take a minute and go ahead for those who are watching live and put that in the chat box, um, we'll talk more about that. And then the second is a fun question. And I don't know where they're going to tie this in, but um, if you had, if, if I asked you, if you had the choice, you had a week off vacation and your choice was to go to the mountains, like a forest place, or you could go to a coastal ocean vacation, which would you choose? And so if you could go ahead and again, if you're live here, put the answer in the chat box. And otherwise, um, oh, here, she's, Andrea's got the poll up here. And you can pick which answer you like, and we'll talk about that more when we get to the end. The reason I asked the first question about time is, in nature is that um, back uh, to the study, and this is a really important study, and that's probably why doc, both Dr. Fisher and I are referring to it, is that um, a lot of questions people ask is, well, how much time do I have to spend in nature? And for me personally, I say the more the better. However, being a holistic nurse, we know that people know themselves when they really stop and think and meditate and connect with themselves. They know what they need and they know what makes them feel good and they know what's good for their holistic health intuitively. So for me, the, the, the standards in the study don't work because I feel like I need more than what they're talking about. In fact, I spend a lot more time out in nature. But in terms of this study, which um, actually looked at over 20,000 people in the UK, um, and it was published in 2019 out of the University of Exeter by Matthew White and his colleagues, they found that people who spent at least 120 minutes in nature a week reported significantly higher good health and psychological well-being than those who spent less. Whereas, and the greatest holistic health benefit was reported by those who spent between 200 and 300 minutes per week engaging with nature. And so if you go back and look and see what you wrote down as your time, if you're spending a, at least 120 minutes a week, you're meeting the baseline um, minimum amount. However, if you can, if you're spending 200 to 300 minutes a week, you're in the more ideal range. The study did not show any extra benefits beyond that. But again, like trust your own self. Um, and what was interesting in this study is how the participants divided up their time didn't change the results. So for example, if I went walking in the park for a half hour at one clip and then enjoyed a picnic with friends or family for an hour the next day, and maybe two days later, I was just hanging out in a hammock for a half hour, that would easily meet the 120 minute minimum recommendation for the week. So you can see how easy you can add those minutes up. It's not about spending like all that chunk of time at once. And then we know that's consistent also with exercise that if we wanna get our movement in, sometimes just a 10 minute walk around the block is all we can do, especially as nurses, maybe you get a quick lunch break and you just wanna get outside for some fresh air. That all adds up to, to our exercise um, minutes. Um, the study results were the same for all the people studied regardless of gender, age, occupation, ethnicity, or economic status. And even those with long-term illnesses or disabilities benefited from time with nature. And so the message is clear that we as humans really need nature. And so um, as nurses, especially those of us who are working on the front line or in the hospitals um, uh, and, and um, different care centers, you know, our, uh, I, you know, I, my first half of my career was spent in a hospital. Um, and so I know full well how, you know, you can go in when the sun is coming up and like going home when the, the sun is going down and basically miss the whole day. Um, so it's really, really essential that we get outdoor time. And I can also add that, um, you would be amazed at how this is important for patients as well, just getting them outdoors. Um, I've had patients tell me that was like the highlight of their day. That was the best thing anyone's 
done for them since they were in the hospital. Um, but our focus today is about the nurses themselves and their wellness. And I believe that the more we practice all these things you're learning today, the more we are able to transfer it to, to our patients, our families, our friends, our communities, um, and we will inspire others to do these kind of practices as well as they see how well we are. So um, a few, I want to talk now um, about a few accessible practices that nurses may want to use so that they can get this nature engagement time in. And these are really simple, easy things because there's, you know, obvious things like going for a hike and, and, um, you know, swimming the channel or whatever you're going to do. But these are just simple things because the focus is restoration. So the assumption is on those days when you're just completely exhausted, drained, here are some easy, simple, doable things. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is called earthing. Um, some people call it grounding. And this is simply going outside, ideally taking off your shoes and socks, if that's, again, safe. And, you know, if you don't have ticks or whatever mosquito things do going on um, and just simply plant your feet in the sand or the ground and if you can find a safe place to do so you can even ex accentuate this by laying down a towel a blanket a yoga mat and just go ahead and lay down and some medical experts say there's not enough evidence that this works but this is a practice that goes back into indigenous cultures um, which many of us believe that this is just as equal and valid as evidence-based um, in terms of their just their long-term experience with these. And I can tell you as a nurse, when, we, when I worked at Yale, we used to actually take those incontinent pads. And, you know, some people may say this is gross, but they were obviously clean. But we used to take the incontinence pads on a beautiful sunny day. And there was a little patch of lawn across from the hospital next to the medical school. And we just, on those days, we could get off the unit. We would take, use those incontinence pads so we could sit on the ground because even if it was wet, we wouldn't end up with soggy, stained uniforms. And we would eat our lunch. And it was always just, and the research is just showing this more. There was a, a study yesterday about just doing a half hour outside at lunch really improved worker um, um, contribution. So that's just one simple little way that you can go ahead and, and, restore your, your holistic health and your energy for the day, um, or at least for a little while. So some of the benefits that have been um, documented are reduced fatigue and increased energy, reduced chronic pain, reduced inflammation, faster recovery from exercise, enhanced and elevate mood, reduced blood pressure and hypertension, and it can support heart health and improve sleep quality. And ironically, just like what um, Dr. Fisher talked about and what I'm talking about today, is these steps, these practices are so simple, it almost seems like, duh, like really that's going to work. But I am a strong advocate of just go out and try it and see if it works for you. Because at the end of the day, just like what Dr. Fisher was saying, if you don't enjoy it, if you don't see a benefit of it, you're not going to do it. And, and not everything works for everybody. So the best way to try these things is to go out and try it yourself, see if it makes a difference. And if it does, tuck it in your, your wellness toolbox. Um, a story, some stories I wanted to share along the earthing is one was, um, and I have this link to a blog that goes into more detail of this story, but there was a woman I met who was an artist who was building these gorgeous sandcastles on the beach. And of course, you know, I, I, you know, gravitated and talked to her at length. And one of the stories she shared with me is that she found that she, years ago, she had this chronic pain knot in her back that she started after she experienced a, an electric shock in an elevator. And she has found that when she goes and builds those sandcastles for the day, by the end of the day, her, the pain is completely gone. And it's the only thing in all the arsenal things that her doctors and her treatment plans and her physical therapists and the massage people have tried to help her. Nothing has removed the pain 100% 
like just going and building sandcastles. And so when I talked to that with some of my holistic nurse colleagues, they, they were really curious and wondering if it wasn't the um, connection with the earth's energy um, that, that is doing that. Um, the other thing is you, when it comes to earthing, they do sell pads and blankets and um, that you can plug in and it's the currents and this is all going into deep physics. But I tend to be very cautious, um, maybe a bit of a pessimist at times when people come at me with products because I used to be a woundostomy continence clinical nurse specialist at Yale. And I, one of the things I was charged with was determining what wound products to bring in the hospital. And I can't even tell you the amount of reps that would call me and, and try to get an appointment with me to sell their products. And all they would have was like one anecdotal report. And, and so I really learned to scrub the data and the, the information to figure out what was most appropriate and safe for our patients. So when it comes to these pads and blankets, I just want to share a story. Is I was talking to a shop owner in my hometown, and we got to talking about earthing, and her husband was using this earthing pad, and um, he had extreme psoriasis on his arm. And, I, and she said it really remarkably, it healed the psoriasis. And I said, well, how do you know it was the pad? And she said, well, because when we went on vacation, and he didn't take the pad for a week. By the end of the week, his psoriasis came back. When we came back home, he started using the pad again. The psoriasis was gone. So again, that's just one anecdotal study. But, you know, with these things in the holistic or the complementary or the alternative realm, a lot of things haven't been studied rigorously because for a variety of reasons. One of them is sometimes things um, combat with big pharma and things like that, 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 um, you know, and I'm not all against big pharma because I, you know, there's times I need these medications, but also some of these things that, that are so simple, people don't want to invest the research money in because there's no profit margin in it. So this is a great opportunity. These different things that we're talking about today for those who are investigating, doing studies and science and research, um, consider doing these kind of research, uh, projects um, while you're in, in school, because all that information will help us practice and utilize them better. Um, the second practice I wanted to talk to you that's really simple is cloud watching. And believe it or not, it sounds, it is just what it sounds like. It's literally going outside, looking up at the sky and allowing yourself to just gaze and be in awe and watch the clouds stroll by and morph into different shapes. Like if you remember years ago, maybe some of us, um, it was before my time, but I've, I've seen them as those lava lamps and they have like bubbles in them and they just rotate back and forth. All of that is really soothing to the mind. And I've actually included in my booth, there is a TED talk just on this subject. So you can learn more about that if you're interested. Um, you may able be able to actually pair this with earthing. So you could be earthing, lying on the ground, relaxing and watching the clouds. So you're relaxing your mind, you're connecting with the earth's energy, the magnetic force, and just doing a lot of really good. And in terms of like time, hopefully you can get at least 10 minutes, maybe ideally 20 minutes. But, you know, some of us like to just go sit and spend the whole day at the beach and I don't know about you, but when I come back from the be a day at the beach after just like relaxing and watching the waves and the and grounding myself, um, I I just have a I can clean my house in a lot shorter time than I can do it if I try to do it before I go because I hate doing it. So, um, a third thing I wanted to talk to you today about is called bir um, bird song, and any natural sound can help us let go and trigger our mind to relax. So while the sound of rolling waves or falling rain may dissolve tension, bird song has been found to have the greatest benefit on our mental health. And it's best to try and get this dose of avian um, symphony, as I call it, outdoors. But if that's not possible, check out the nature sounds on a music app or YouTube. And those are all really easy to just 
with Google, you can find things like that. There's a lot of good resources for that. And I just want to share a story about this with listening is that um, one of my colleagues, a nurse, Sarah, who is, worked for years in oncology nursing, shared with me that she used to take ocean CDs back in the day when they had CDs and play them. And she would gently massage her patient's head while they listened to the ocean waves just roll. And she said, not only did it soothe her patient, but it soothed her as well. So it was like a two for one. She helped her patient. She helped herself. She wasn't goofing off. It was a, it was definitely a win-win. And that's something that we also could do is couple trying to calm ourselves down as well as our patients using some of these um, modalities. And the last one I wanted to talk to you about is water. And this is, as you can tell from my picture in the back, my one of my favorite things. And this um, basically getting in on near or underwater to help get into what's called a, a blue mind state um, over in the UK and some other places they call it blue health. Um, but blue mind is considered basically a mildly meditative state that we fall into um, when we're anyway connected with water. And over here in the States, Dr. Wallace um, Jane Nichols is a leader and creator of the term Blue Mind in this respect. Um, and he and I have done a lot of um, collaborative discussions and, and, and work together. And um, it's really remarkable because it's so easy. The possibilities are endless of how you can connect with water, whether you paddleboard, you kayak, dive, boat, swim, surf, fish, float. Floating is becoming extremely popular. The leaders in this are Iceland, I think. Um, water gardening. And water has the ability, as one of my cancer, um, three-time cancer survivors um, that I know said, that when she gets into a pool and dips her head under the water, she just feels all the stress dissolve into the pool. So it can really easily convert us into a state of peace. And simply mindfully connecting with water, even if we're in a clinical situation and we're washing our hands in between patients, we can mindfully think about that, that the water is just washing the stress off. And that, or we could close our eyes for a minute, maybe imagine being in a shower or a warm bath or a beach or whatever it is that makes triggers that oh, response. Um, and I just want to give you an example of what I think is so profound with water because our veterans have really, really led the way in terms of using nature as an adjunct therapy for their PTSD um, and mental health. And one example was in surf therapy sessions, um, the the PT, this veterans who experience PTSD, some of them have talked about how they're so supercharged and when they anticipate something, their neurological systems go into a, a fight or flight state and, and they, um, they, they stay in that versus when they're surfing and they're waiting for the wave eventually what happens is as they catch the wave, and this goes into the repetitive um, behaviors that Dr. Fisher was talking about, as they begin to catch a wave and ride a wave and experience the dopamine rush, the really joy, you nirvana kind of feeling, it's really cool if you haven't tried it. But um, as they repetitively do that, it rechanges their, their neural pathways so that when they think they're waiting for something instead of being braced and ready to fight or flight. Now they're into a, like anticipating joy and, and, you know, just really a good feeling. So that's how profound um, and quickly that water can work. Um, I, I want to just focus on one other study that I think is really in, interesting. And it's um, done by Dr. David Strayer, who um, created the term three-day effect. And Dr. Strayer um, is a cognitive psychologist in the University of Utah. And he discovered 
that when he was will, doing wilderness backpacking with groups, this what he called a magical experience at the third day of nature. And what I found so interesting about this is this was really consistent with what I found. And as I experienced when I would go to remote, this remote Caribbean island to do um, work with whales and, and dolphins, is that this island had no TV, no one internet that you, everybody had to share, but like nobody was on the internet. And it was amazing those first three days, like when you first got there, you were twitchy and, you know, and, and it was consistent with what I'd watch when, when people arrived on the island. They'd be twitchy, they'd be looking at their watch, they'd try to sit in the chair, but they'd get up and move. There was nothing to do. And so it's almost like our, our bodies and our minds have to, to gear down, to shift down. So um, we've even found that some of these kids who are so into gaming or, or their phones or just go, go, go. When you take them on a mountain retreat, they're, they're also like twitchy and anxious. And so allowing those three days to gear down after the three days, they discovered that because of the frontal cortex is where they're seeing things calm down. Um, other parts of the brain start to take over and those they they see things like greater sensory perception and empathy um, and a 50% better creative problem solving. Um, what I think is so interesting about this is as nurses, especially when we're wore down and tired, is that this is something, or if we're a nurse manager or a leader, is that this is something you want to put in your toolbox, is that when, you, when we get to that point, or we want to prevent ourselves from overstimulating our minds and our bodies, is that consider taking at least a three-day nature immersion break. And I like to say the, the more raw the nature, the better, with less stimulation, less phone usage, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, knowing that it creates better empathy, I think it's like a really good investment for these um, entities that are um, claiming to be about caring. Cause that's, this is really like, we need systems that care not only about patients, but also about their staff. And that is really a sore spot, at least here in the U S I know right now. Um, so in closing, let me just take a quick look here. Um, I just would be, um, before we go to questions, um, I hope, hopefully we'll have some, a minute or so to take questions or if there's any nature experiences you wanna share. I just want to um, thank you for your time and watching this. And, and I really hope this has inspired you to tap into nature in whichever way you find fulfilling and joyful. And there's a plethora of other information on my website, thenaturenurse.com. So please check that out. I invite you to subscribe to our quarterly newsletter. Our YouTube channel is like really taking off. I, every month I get these reports of how many minutes are watched and all of a sudden it's just going up. So I think more and more people are recognizing the benefit and looking for ways, which we have a whole bunch of things on that. And then you can also connect with us on social media at The Nature Nurse, and we have a newsletter you can subscribe to. So before I close, I wanted to go back and talk about the, the one question um, that I asked in the beginning in terms of you, if you were to choose um, whether you would want to go to a beach or go to the mountains on a vacation. And the reason I asked that is because there was a study done in the universe by the University of Virginia, and it's published in 2015 in the Journal of Research in Personality, that found that those who choose a mountain vacation are more likely to be introverted versus those who choose the ocean vacations who were more likely to be extroverted. And I just thought that was fun. I feel like it was pretty consistent. And it seems as I ask people that, and I, that I know, and I say, oh yeah, that, you know, that makes sense. Cause you seem like you really are introverted or, you know, that's, I can see why you're heading to the beach. Cause you, you know, you can't put you alone for too long and um, you get wiggy. So it's just another funny, fun way to do a self-analysis and to get to know other people. So hopefully you can play around with that as well. So um, I don't think I see any questions. So I just greatly want to th thank you for your time and I hope to see you outdoors.
Thank you so much, Sue, for bringing us into nature and really for tailoring your talk to our profession as well. As you mentioned, nurses are particularly busy, especially working different shifts and oftentimes really not having the opportunity um, to spend as much time outside as we'd like to. But the simple and short tips that you provided are sure to keep each of us grounded, even if just for a few minutes and possibly together. As Zoe mentioned earlier in her talk, well-being has so much to do with connection. And as you mentioned at the beginning of your talk, we are all very much intertwined. The next speaker that I have the honor of introducing has created her own community of togetherness through the connection of nursing and music. I hope to see each of you in our next and final session with the amazing Winnie Neely. Thanks so much again, Sue.